<sighs> Welcome to another episode of Me Time. Today is a dark and dreary day outside. It's rainy, it's cold, very uncomfortable. So I do not have the luxury of sunlight streaming in from the left and lighting up this room. So I need to experiment with the lights, lamps here, lamps there. So uh, I suppose it doesn't look very good, so, but I don't have much of a choice. Today, I want to talk about the pursuit of happiness. A very American topic, very important topic, one of the core, uh, let me say, values. And um, before I get into that, as an introduction, I must say that I am a follower on YouTube of uh, Connor Sullivan and Silas Nasita. Connor Sullivan is from California and um, he used to play American football and he quit I think in 2018 uh, to follow a well a YouTube career and he's doing pretty well so far. He became kind of a star in, in Germany when he smuggled a small pocket camera into uh, the Stuttgart Stadium and um, made some footage of the events during a Stuttgart versus Karlsruhe derby, which was pretty exciting um, and uh, very surprising for, for him as an American. The other guy, Silas Nasita, is also an American football player. I forgot where he's from. He used to play for, uh, for Frankfurt uh, in Germany and uh, he used to play for Marburg, Germany. Uh, but his contract wasn't prolonged, so these days he's leaving Germany again, um, back to the United States. I think you can't really say that. <sighs> Connor and Silas have been doing videos about their travels and about Germany in particular uh, over the course of these last two years. And I like them a lot. Um, I like their outsider's view. Their videos have been exciting, interesting and fun to watch. And maybe you should too. I'll put the links uh, below. Both Silas and Connor are devout Christians and that is fine. That's fine with me. I have no problem with that. Uh, Connor has a sub-channel in which he talks exclusively about his faith, while Silas has only lately come out of the closet, so to speak, um, with a video that they appeared both in, uh, which they called uh, the most important thing in our lives. And what they say in this video is that it is the faith in Jesus Christ that gives them their motivation, their joy in life, their hope. Everything they have comes from their love for Jesus Christ, the most important thing in their lives. The true joy that we have has come from God. Yes. And here's what we've learned. Everyone is grasping for things in this world to satisfy them, and it never does. Just time and time and time again, you can look at famous people in America, famous people all over the world who got everything that you could ever want on this earth and they still weren't satisfied. And it just goes to show you that there's something in our hearts that we're longing for yeah. as humans that cannot be filled by the things of this world. Because I bet you all, all the people watching this video right now have things in their life that they might be like, hey, I'm unsatisfied. If I could just fix this, then right. I'd be happy. Right. But that's happened 20 times to them already. Right. If I could just make this much money, if yeah. I could just do this, if I could just do this, how many times in your life have you asked or said that and then you got there, and then you so just like... There's the next thing. The next thing. They suggest that you know, if you pursue happiness by achieving more, you say, if I only had this bigger car, then I would be happy. Or if I earned this much money, then I'd be happy. Or if I had this, or if I had that, then I'd be happy. But you still are not. What they mean to say is 
that what these people who want to achieve this and still do not feel happy, what these people miss is the love of Jesus Christ in their hearts. Because whatever you achieve, there's still a hole in your heart and what you need is Jesus Christ uh, as your savior and then you can achieve real happiness. Well, I dare to disagree because in my humble opinion, happiness comes not from achieving more and finally arriving at Jesus Christ, but happiness comes from an absence of desires. You might say that, that is easier said than done uh, because many people naturally have desires. It's only human. Just switching off these desires is, of course, difficult. My parents would take me to fairs, uh, to festivals, exhibitions, f whatever. And my father would ask me, do you want cotton candy? And I was like, no. Do you want a balloon? No. Do you want a soda? No. Wanting something makes you unhappy. Because you have to give it an effort to achieve it. And unless you are a high energy person who wakes up in the morning at 5 and says, let's go, you're done for. What are my desires? One, I want enough money to afford an apartment, a roof above my head, a bed in which to sleep. And I have achieved that. Next, I want enough money to buy the food which I like and the drinks that I like. Achieved. I want enough money to allow myself a little luxury, at least now and then. So an internet connection is nice. Uh, maybe a movie now and then or, uh, or music or what have you. Achieved. I wish to live with a partner who loves me, who cares about me. Achieved. I wish to have a group of friends whom to share my life with, who share their lives with me. Achieved. There is a last point in the list which I desire, and that is linked to a video that Connor made in which he said everybody is going to die someday. I want to encourage everyone who watches this video basically to consider their future after death. If you're unsure of what happens, I would really encourage you guys to figure that out at least to an extent where you're almost sure about what happens instead of just accepting what society says because if your soul lives forever this is the most important thing I believe that after we die our soul lives eternally I do so I want to tell you and encourage you to consider your eternal future which is infinitely more valuable than your current life so the last point that I wish for is to die in dignity when my time comes. I do not want to die in an act of violence or a disaster or an accident like my father's father. I do not want to die alone and forlorn like my mother's father. I don't want to die strapped to my bed because I cannot control myself anymore like my mother's mother. Especially Christians ask the questions, as an atheist, how can you have hope if there is no salvation? And the answer to that is surprisingly easy. You see, I ask them, do you remember a good night's sleep? You went to bed and you slept away and you didn't dream. And you woke up refreshed. And that time in between, these hours in between, that is like being dead. I imagine death being like a dreamless slumber. And that is not very frightening. 
but we might also take it a step further. Do you remember the time before your birth? Of course you don't. Well, that is the same as being dead. Is that frightening? Not at all. It's an absence of existence. You won't even feel it. The problem with death is not being dead. The problem with death is dying. And I would like to die in dignity when my time comes. So in conclusion, I would say that I am a rather happy person. Of course, everybody has problems. I have problems. I worry about my future. I worry about the future of my wife or of my friends. I worry about the future of the world. But that doesn't stop me from feeling a profound happiness. I am happy with the things that I have achieved for myself. And I think I will talk about being proud of something you did not achieve for yourself in a later video, because it's an interesting topic. And that, friends, is my advice for you. Don't always ask for more. Don't always ask for the higher wage, for the bigger car, for the bigger house, for the boat, whatever advertising might want to sell you. I'm not saying be happy with a still stand, but learn to appreciate the little things in life and happiness will come by itself. And you don't need Jesus Christ, you don't need Muhammad, you don't need Buddha, you don't need Krishna. Happiness comes from within yourself, from an absence of desires. And my last wish for today is that you give this some thought and I wish you a good night and see you next time.